So staying active and independent for longer is an Interreg 2Cs project with funding from the European Regional Development Fund. Uh, and as part of this project, we've developed up nine uh, regional walks that are designed to be as accessible as possible with a particular focus on people living with dementia. Although an age-associated condition, it's not a natural part of ageing um, and therefore people living with dementia are, have become increasingly isolated and not feeling as part of their communities. What this project is looking to address is to try and make um, opportunities ac as accessible as possible for them in their local area. So as part of the project we've developed a toolkit that will look to make uh, accessible walking routes for people living with dementia. Uh, this toolkit is designed to be used by various organisations ranging from the voluntary sector to private companies, um, designed so that they can support people in their local community who are, who are living with dementia to become uh, part of their community and access their local surrounding area. When developing the toolkit, we highlighted the key things to take into consideration to help develop your own walk. The walks would be either a circular route, so it starts from the start point, does a circular route, finishes back, or it can be an out and back, so at the start point, you can walk out to a certain location or a landmark, turn back and come back the same route back to the start point. So the start and finish point will usually be the same. So many people will need accessible disabled parking, so it's always a thing to consider. So the start and finish point ideally will need to be near a disabled parking space. So we're looking to have shelter, toilets and refreshments. It's always recommended that there's toilets at the start location or very near to the start location. Refreshments as well, so if you're starting you might want to have a cup of tea before you leave for the walk and also when you get back from the walk it's always important to have some refreshment points there. Um, shelter as well because you can have different weather conditions, um, it, you might start a walk on a clear day when you finish it might not be so clear if it's a bit wet or windy, also having that shelter. And it's also important to potentially have those during route as well. The Chroma walk we're here today looking at is probably one of the hardest walks we've actually developed and it's okay to have a different range and variety of uh, gradient walks. Um, key thing is that to be clear when you've developed the walk that it mentions if it's wheelchair accessible and the difficulty of it. So we usually grade ours easy, medium or hard. Um, easy and mediums would be wheelchair accessible. The hard ones would be more difficult for wheelchairs. So with the walks themselves, um, they don't need to be a set duration or a set distance. Um, the main part is having the length uh, changeable. So you've got a route walked out, it can easily be shortened and easily be lengthened. It's important to have landmarks and points of interest throughout the walks. Um, this will be really good for the person living with dementia and their carer to reflect and reminiscence of things that they've done previously when they were younger. For example, like Chroma Pier could remind them of a visit they'd done several years ago. Signage, ideally the signage would be straightforward and clear. It's not a problem if there isn't any signs up anywhere, but there will be a map designed which will have the landmarks, etc., which will help to navigate. Road safety, this is an important element of the walk. Um, we want to avoid areas that are, have busy roads and a lot of traffic and any crossing points, road crossing points, will be at zebra crossings. Other things to consider when developing a dementia-friendly walk would be things like um, puddles, different colours and changes in the floor. Um, different terrain underfoot as well, are there any sudden changes, these are the types of things to try and avoid. Another point to consider is how busy the area is. Uh, the walks we've de developed so far are in busy coastal towns so certain times of the year like the summer holidays are going to be busier. So when developing our nine dementia friendly walks, we thought it was key to engage with people who are actually living with dementia and their carers about what they would find most accessible uh, 
within those walks uh, and we feel it's key for people who are developing up their own walks where possible to also engage with that community and find out what they want from a walk uh, and how they can best communicate that out to their local community. To download this toolkit and access further support in developing up your own dementia friendly walks please go to the active ageing section of the Active Norfolk website. Other places to get more general information about dementia are the Outsider Society, which has resources available for organisations, including advice on the Dementia Friend Schemes, signage and a variety of sector-specific business toolkits.